Now I got a shovel behind me in a bucket. Every now and then a cow wants to pee. But, uh, they don't like to do it. They know you don't like it. And if I catch it in that bucket, it just bothers her for some reason. And she'll try not to do it. So it happens seldom, but I catch it in that bucket. And that's where you make uh, lemonade out of lemons. You know, you can get mad about it, but I got a couple of fruit trees right around the corner. Works good on them. And if you do do this, I got a shovel, I catch it before it hits the pad. That way I can get it up before it makes a mess. Same thing, I just put it on the fruit trees around the corner. If it kicks over the bucket, ain't nothing you can do. Every now and then it happens, maybe uh, once every year or so, she'll make a misstep and sling some sand or something in the bucket. And uh, you know, I just give it to the chickens. I don't want to take a chance of having any kind of bacteria, E. coli, or anything like that. about done, see? You want to go to the extra mile to keep your, your cow's bag clean, keep her clean. I give her a bath a couple times a year, wash her good, make sure she's free of ticks and fleas. I rub my hands all over her legs and chest and check, check her real good. Then watch for cuts or scrapes or anything like that. Uh, I do put a little fly stuff on her. Sometimes in the spring, the flies are fall. In the summertime, the flies are bad. And that's one of the worst things because she's swishing that tail hitting flies and a lot of times she's hitting you. It hurts. So uh, I try to put stuff on and keep the flies off. And I worm her about twice a year, some chemical wormer. The organic wormers I've used, I have you know, I don't think I don't think they work or not. I never saw any signs that my cows had for worms. I just do it just to be on the safe side. Just be careful when you worm them that it's something that doesn't affect the milk or the calf if she's pregnant. Try to do it at a time where it doesn't affect any of that. Uh, when, you know, while you're trying to dry a cow, it's a good time because you're not milking her. Now, I don't strip a cow, but I squeeze good and make sure I get it all out. I don't like to, I don't like to slide my fingers like that. It just creates a bulb and makes her tits deformed. I just jump back and forth until I get pretty much all of it. And that's, that's something you'll have to learn from experience when you've gotten it all. Because you can milk a cow, wow. But uh, it's hard to fix it where you just don't get it all. And just jump back and forth. She's been a good cow. That moved the muscle. By the way, our little farm here is in Midland City, Alabama. We're about uh, 100 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, a few miles from Georgia, and maybe uh, a few miles from Florida, like 15 miles from Florida, I guess. 15 miles from Georgia, something like that. All right, about to get it all. And we've got a gallon in the bucket and then a half gallon in the bottle right there. Now you can take this gallon of milk right here and uh, get a quart of cream off of it. And uh, you do that, about three milkings, take three quarts of cream, put it in your churn, and you make a pound of butter. Kind of how it works out for us. And a lot of it depends on if we've been in a drought, if we haven't had rain for a long time, milk won't be as rich. The quality of hay you're able to purchase. Oh, we don't have a big enough farm to grow our own hay, we just have to do the best we can. This is the nipple I start the calf on. I usually cut a much bigger hole in the end of it when I start because they don't know what they're doing. And they've been nursing their mama for a week, and now you got to get them on a bottle. Usually it takes about two, maybe three days if they're a week old. If they're older, it takes a little longer to train them, but we'll do that in just a minute. Let's get Dolly out of here now. Always oh, talk sweet to her. She's done a good job. You brush her off again. Nice tone of voice. You know, if she stammers around or hits you with her tail, you can change the tone of voice a little bit. She gets the point. All right, and then I spray her with betadine. Just a little spray. So I'll do it on the ends. Doesn't take much of that, and we'll get her out. Now, she don't want to get out of this box because she's got some good food. So what I do is I, I just use my hips to push her over. And, uh, come on, let's go. Now be patient. She don't want to leave, so I'm gonna push her. All right, here we go. Come on. Turn around here. Come on. She'll take this bottle easily. 
Come on. Yeah. See how she does that? And I've trained her. I got a rack. I can just hang the bottle and it'll, the hanger right here works really good. But to get them to this point takes a little work. What you have to do when they're just a few days old is you have to catch them like this. Okay, it's hard to do because they're pretty big and they'll butt you and hurt you. But you just catch them, they'll fight you every step of the way. You open their mouth open, you just force this bottle in there and you just keep it in until they suck it. And if they won't, you just put your hand over their nose so they can't breathe. Eventually they'll suck it. And it takes a couple of a couple of days to get them to do that. But uh, just trap them where they can't back up. Just hold on to their head, don't let them pull you over. And just cram it in their mouth so they get the hang of it. But that's what you do. And so after six weeks, you know, he didn't, he didn't take anything. She sees the bottle, she'll come running. I'm going to wean her in about two more weeks. We got good grass going from the spring and she's already eating. And uh, we're kind of getting short on milk because she's drinking it all. And I'll put a halter on her here soon and work with her. Whenever I feed them, I go out and pet them. And a lot of times I'll just lead them with a rope, just lead them a little bit. And I uh, put some feed out for them. And they get used to you taking them somewhere to, to get some food. Take a long drink, half a gallon of milk. We've got uh, four females here that are, two of them were milking, and uh, two of them are about to start with their first calves, and we'll start training them to milk. Now, when I train one, I just do like my granddaddy said, I get me a piece of stick, a hammer handle. You don't want to hurt them really bad. You certainly don't want to cut their skin or anything, but just lay it on the concrete next to where you're working. And when they kick you, you just whack them on that shin bone, kick them back. And cow can't kick like a horse, you know. If a horse hurts you, a cow kicks about like somebody. They don't kick straight back. They can't do a very good job of that. They kick up and away like that, right where you're sitting. So uh, usually what happens is they got sand or dirt on their hoof, and you get a, a real good uh, sanding. But when they do that, you use a strong tone of voice to tell them no, and you whack them on that shin. And uh, usually if my cow's been at the pasture for a long time and hadn't milked them, she'll, she'll kick me a time or two or try, and I'll... Whack her, and the uh, next day I'll come out there and she'll try it again. I'll take that piece of stick and knock it on the concrete. She'll, her ear, you see her ears roll back, she knows what's coming. She'll quit. But that's how I train them. I don't know other way to do it. This works pretty good. This calf is going to knock me out in a minute. Let me put her back in the pan. Calf want milk is a hard thing to stop. Ah. Come on, girl. Ah. There's Sarah. We milk about, uh, try to milk every 12 hours ideally. You can't always do that, but you do need to milk them twice a day, at least for the first six months. If you want to cut back to once a day, just pick your time. Try to be consistent about it and uh, just watch what you feed them. You know, you don't pour the high protein feed to them and, and try to milk them once a day. But uh, sometimes it's really hard to have cows because you got to be here twice a day for so long. You got to be consistent. I use the milk about 8 in the morning and then about 8 at night. And sometimes I have to change my schedule. When I do, I try to do it gradually. Well, Steve, I guess that's about it. Are the rest of the cows left, the bulls left, and the other ones just headed off.